Hey everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about 10 things I wish I knew before I started dressing vintage. Let's get started. First things first, and this is a given, it's expensive. I really, really wish someone would have, you know, walked up to me and be like, um, hey Kayla, this is gonna cost you quite a bit of money. I don't spend a whole bunch of money. I don't have a ton of disposable income, so I don't get dresses very often, but I really wish someone would have been like, yeah, that's gonna cost you a little bit of money. And that's important to know going into it because some people don't have a lot of money, some people do. If you want to buy a whole closet's worth of vintage clothing right off the bat, that's awesome. You do you. But for people like me, I'm not rich. So I really kind of wish someone would have been like, dresses can cost upwards of like $200. Fortunately, I'm an expert on using eBay. So I get my dresses for no more than like $60. But $60 is still quite a bit of money for a high school student who didn't have any money. So I really wish someone would have told me that. Number two, it requires actually quite a bit of coordination. I mean, if you really want your outfits to look as best as possible and as authentic as possible, it's going to require quite a bit of coordination and just knowledge about fashion in itself. Um, you're gonna have to match bags with shoes, with accessories and jewelry and petticoats. It's, it takes quite a bit for me to sit there and go, okay, I'm going to wear this dress, but because this dress has certain colors, I'm going to wear these shoes with this bag, and oh, I need to make sure my earrings match. It's really kind of a hassle. I mean, I look fabulous, but <laughs> it takes work to look this good. I really wish someone would have been like, yeah, you're going to spend upwards of like three hours getting ready in the morning. I, maybe it's not three hours, but it takes me quite a bit of time. Side note, I was that kid who always laid their outfits out every single night before going to bed for school. The next thing is also kind of a given, but people are going to judge you. People will judge you no matter what you wear. So it's important for you that you wear what makes you happy, because like I said, everyone's going to judge you all the time. But people are going to judge you, especially if you're wearing any sort of alt fashion. Alt fashion, if you don't know what it is, alternative fashion. It's basically any fashion that's not in the societal norms. Vintage fashion is alt fashion, things like Lolita, literally any sort of punk or goth or basically anything that you wouldn't find in like a fast fashion store is alt fashion, essentially. So anyways, people are going to judge you and people are going to be like, mm, okay, boomer, and people in the stores are going to look at you. People are always going to be like, I don't get it. But you have to you have to ignore that. You have to kind of disregard that because it's going to happen. And I really kind of wish someone would have been like, people are going to be staring at you on the street. People are going to be, people are going to stop what they're doing when you pass them on the street in this outfit that looks like it came from 70 years ago. People are going to stop and look. And people are going to ask questions and that's okay. You, you have to be able to answer these questions that people are going to have. And I kind of wish someone mentally prepared me for that. So if you're starting with vintage fashion, I'm not saying this to discourage you. Please, please do dress vintage because it's a nice community. But people are going to say something. But this leads me into my next point that you will get more love than you do hate. I promise you, people are going to love it. <laughs> they always love it. You will get those people who are like, oh my God, okay, so you dress like a boomer, got it, okay. But so many people are gonna be like, this is incredible, this is amazing, never been done before, show-stopping, gorgeous, people are gonna love it. And that's really what keeps me going sometimes, is people will walk up to me in school and be like, oh my god, like, so many people dress in pajamas, so many people dress in sweats, and bring blankets and pillows to school, and you don't. You get up early every day and you look nice. This is a dress I wore quite commonly to school. It's quite easy to put on, so in the days that I really wasn't feeling it, I would just slip on something easy. This is my easy dress and it still looks wonderful. People love it, especially older people. Not to flex, but I was always really good with people's parents. Old people love it. Old people are like, I used to wear that when I was your age. I'm be like, oh my god, how old are you? But people love it and the good will always outweigh the bad. And even if the bad sometimes outweighs the good, you just gotta keep reminding yourself why you're doing it. 
and hopefully the answer is you're doing it for you. So yeah, the, the compliments that you'll get, sometimes they'll just be well worth it. One thing I really wish someone would have said to me is it is going to be really hard to find authentic vintage clothing, especially for a good price. There's so many different factors. So first of all, the clothes has to be authentic. Okay, so that weeds out like 80% of it because vintage by nature is a limited supply. So let's take 100 dresses. 80 of those dresses are not vintage. So throw those out. You have 20 dresses. Those dresses need to be in your size. Fortunately, because the vintage world is catered to um, smaller women because that's just how it was back then, I have more luck. But I still am considered big for back then. I can't find dresses in my size sometimes. So that's, mm, that's about 10 dresses gone because they're either too small or too big. So you have 10 dresses left. You need to find something affordable. I can't spend any more than $60 total. That takes out about five dresses. You have five dresses left. They need to be in good condition. Good enough condition that you can wear it. That takes out three dresses. You have two dresses left and that's what you can buy. It is, it's really hard, it is, but you can't let how hard it is to find clothes that are your size, your budget, good condition. You can't let that stop you. It takes forever to find good stuff, but if you can master the art of buying on eBay, that will work wonders for you. I promise you, R wonders. But you don't have to just use eBay. You can use Depop, you can use, um, what's the other one, Poshmark. You're not gonna find as much um, 1950s on there, but those are also good places, you know? It's just about looking and you have to start looking because dresses can go like that. Someone finds a good dress that's their size, their budget, good condition, they buy it like that. I know I do. So you have to be fast. And the best time to start searching is now. So that's something I really wish someone would have said. Number six, it takes practice. Believe it or not, dressing a particular way takes practice. And it's practice with several different things. So first of all, it takes practice to be able to walk in heels. I walk in heels every day. I never really had a problem with it, but there was a time where I'd have to sit in my house, walk around my house in heels because I didn't know how to do it. Now that I wear heels every day, it comes quite naturally to me. But especially if you're someone who just cannot walk in heels, you don't have to walk in heels if you don't want to, but if you would like to, you gotta practice. Because if you fall in public, I walk on grass, I walk in dirt, I can walk on, I run in heels, I can walk on any surface in heels. It took practice. I have a pair of six inch heels in my closet, practice. Not only do you want to practice with your shoes, you want to practice with your hair. I, I couldn't get my hair like this the first time I did it. The first time I ever tried victory rolls, it was, it was such a hot mess. I still have pictures of it from 2016. It's, it's rough. <laughs> but the next thing is that you also need to practice with your makeup. Now, I say it all the time, but I'm not a makeup expert. But if you do want to get that vintage look, you are going to have to practice your makeup if you want to do your makeup. You are under no obligation to anyone to do makeup. Let me tell you that. Okay, if people are like, oh, well, you have the vintage dresses, you have the hair, where's the makeup? Or you wear the dresses, where's your hair? Where's your makeup? You don't have to. If you want to just dress vintage without doing your hair and makeup, you don't have to. But if you are, you need to practice because people aren't gonna be like, oh, I love your victory rolls. If they don't look like victory rolls. I mean, they, they might probably not even know what a victory roll is, but they'll understand like, oh, that looks like a vintage hairstyle, you know? So practice your hair, your makeup, your walking, how you carry yourself is for me personally is part of it. Confidence. I practice with my confidence all the time. Even if I'm not feeling confident, just before I filmed this video, I went to the mall and I walked around in a dress that I did not feel com like confident and comfortable in. Even if you're not, you need to be able to practice that confidence so that way you can take that confidence out in public even if you're not feeling that way. Because if you feel confident, people will be like, oh, okay, well, she knows what she's doing. 
<laughs> I don't. I don't. But it's all about practice. And that's something that really just takes up quite a bit of time, but it's well worth it. Which brings me to point number seven. I really wish someone would have said that it takes years to be able to to build up your your signature style, your look, your brand, because there's so many different types of retro clothing. There's authentic. You can look like a cartoon character if you'd like. People tell me I look like a cartoon character because me. You know, there's like so many different styles. There's nautical. There's like whatever you wanted to do, you could do it. And you're gonna have to take a little while to discover what you do and what you don't like. I did rockabilly for quite a while. In fact, my first vintage like outing was a car show. And that was the first time I wore vintage in public. After that, I realized like, I don't like rockabilly. It was a mods versus rockers type thing. And I did not really like it. And that's fine. If you don't like it, that's fine. You can move on and be like, hmm. And so I went from rockabilly to like nautical, like sailory type vibes. I didn't really like that. Um, my first dress actually, you know, it's sitting right here. My first dress was this. It's obviously kind of like a little bit of a little bit of rockabilly, but it's a sailor dress. And I realized like that's not really my style. I didn't really like wearing it outside of Ocean City. And yeah, so I said, okay, moving on. This was my second dress. This was my second dress that I ever got. I love this style. This was where I was like, ooh, I like this. I don't know how I would describe this. Um, pin up maybe like an old Hollywood type look. That's really what I kind of do is like pin up old Hollywood kind of mixed together. But I also do like authentic vintage, which is just, I try to make it look like an everyday 1950s look. It doesn't have to be something super special. It doesn't have to look like I'm about to go do modeling. It should look to me like someone tore a page out of a high school yearbook and just threw it and now here I am. Like I want to make it look real, like something that someone would actually wear. And all this to say, it's going to take you quite some time to figure out what you want to do. If you want to dress every single day like you're on the cover of a pinup magazine, period. That's awesome. I love that for you. Do it. But don't be upset if it takes time or if you're like, I just don't know what I want to do and don't get discouraged. If you're like, I don't know what I want to do, so I don't want to do this anymore because it, it takes time. So point number eight, and this is kind of something that I touched on a little bit earlier, but people are going to ask you so many questions. There are going to be so many questions and that's not a bad thing. People aren't always going to ask you mean questions or rude questions. Sometimes people will just ask you questions out of curiosity. Sometimes they'll be good questions, but you're going to have to start learning how to talk to people and answer these questions. I did a Q&A because people ask me questions. People ask me questions all the time. Some examples, some of the bad questions might be like, I mean, it really also is about the, the context and the intent and their tone of voice that can make a good question or a bad question. But some of the bad questions I've gotten are like, why do you dress like that? Like you realize you dress like a boomer, right? Or why do you dress like my grandma? You know, just really bad questions like that. Some people ask me like, is this like a thing that you do? No. People don't always realize that they're asking rude questions because it's out of curiosity, but just you don't ask people <laughs> if what they're doing is a, a thing that they like. You know what I mean? So people will ask questions all the time and some of the good questions, um, and these aren't like good questions, but just some of the, the more positive questions that you'll get are like, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Where'd you get your dress from? Why did you start dressing like this? Who was your inspiration? People will ask you things like that all the time. Like, where did, where did you get that particular dress? People are just going to ask you things because they're curious. I've never seen someone dress like this before, especially out in public. Little kids will come up to me and ask me like, oh, are you a princess? Sometimes I say yes, but <laughs> people are going to ask you things all the time and people are going to ask you, are you in a play? Are you in a musical? Do you do theater? Are you, do you do parties? Do you like, pff, what is this all about? You got to learn how to answer questions because I promise you there will be some questions, especially online. 
because online people aren't afraid to ask you questions because like there's no repercussions so people will ask whatever now you are by no means obligated to answer these questions you are not obligated to do anything in this world if someone answers a question and you're not comfortable with answering that question you don't have to if someone asks you especially if you're a minor and someone's like oh is this like a thing you do not have to answer that question first of all they shouldn't be asking you that question but if they do you can just be like mm, and walk away and walk away what are they gonna do track you down and be like um hey i asked you a question like that's when you start screaming hey i don't know this man but anyways i really wish i was mentally prepared for all of the all the questions i got when i was out in public when i was online when i was with my friends because your friends and your family are going to be the first ones to ask questions choosing to dress in a certain way isn't something crazy it's not something crazy and where people are going to like disown you hopefully if that's the case that's a separate conversation but your friends and your family are going to be like oh okay why you don't have to tell them why but they are going to be the first ones to ask you questions so you need to start answering questions and you need to start getting comfortable with answering the questions from your friends and your family before you go out in public and then people you don't even know are going to start asking you the same questions and sometimes people will ask you questions that are quite unexpected but you just have to learn to improvise adapt and overcome Ugh. another thing that i can't stand that happens and i really wish someone would have told me before i started dressing vintage was that people are going to assume things about you people are going to assume things about you no matter what if i see someone walking down the street and i don't know them I'll make an assumption about them. I mean, it's a harmless assumption. I'm not gonna be like, mm, she's racist, you know? But people will make that assumption about you if you're dressing vintage. And that's why it's such a popular phrase, vintage fashion, not vintage values. Because just because I dress this way, um, because I dress like someone from the 40s, from the 50s, does not mean I have the particular mindset of someone from the 40s and the 50s. I wouldn't be alive back in the 40s or the 50s. You know what I'm saying? Just because I dress like this does not mean that I feel the same way that they do. People are going to assume your political beliefs um, or your beliefs on, I've gotten questions that are like, hey Kayla, this is kind of an irrelevant question, but what are your views on women's rights? What? I'm a woman. I, w I should hope I believe in women's rights, but people people ask that because they're like, look at her. People ask me about um, my political stance, like what party I'm in, which is such an inappropriate question to ask. People will ask about, like I said, your views on things like um, women's rights, reproductive rights, racism, like overall sexism. People will ask you about anything to try to gauge where you are um, on that political spectrum, let's call it. And it's quite, a, it's quite rude for them to do that. But like I said earlier, you're going to have to get used to people judging you, asking you questions, and assuming things. People assume that I'm also a mean person. People will assume that I'm a mean person simply because, because this is how I sit. Like this is the face that I make constantly <laughs> and it's a resting, um, it's RBF. And so people will always be like, oh yeah, when I first met you, I thought you were intimidating. I thought you were scary. I thought you were stuck up and pretentious and mean. And that really hurts to hear. It really hurts to hear that some of my best friends assumed that I was a certain way because of the way that I dressed. And then once you meet them and once you start talking to them, they get over it and they're like, oh my god, like I used to think you were so mean, but like you're so nice. I just thought it was because of the way you dressed. And I was like, uh, yep, right there, the way I dress. People are going to assume things about you. You need to be able to confront those assumptions and be like, no, this is what I believe in. If you're comfortable with sharing what you believe in, you might have to get comfortable sharing what you believe in because if you don't, people are going to assume that you might be on the wrong end of the spectrum. However, 
people are just going to assume things and you're going to have to be personable and be kind to everyone all the time because if you don't prove them wrong they will always assume that they're right and you don't want that because then they're going to start saying oh she's a bitch she's mean she's pretentious and they don't even know you that's something i should have gotten prepared for and i'm prepared for it now I, i've got a thick skin now but people will assume so get used to that one but finally to wrap all of this up the thing that i wish i would have known about the most was that this was going to be the best decision i had ever made in my life people think it's a phase people think okay well by the time she's an adult by the time she's in college she's not going to be doing this anymore maybe i i can't say i really can't say but so far in the five years that i've been doing this is this has been one of the greatest things that I've ever done. If you would have told me in sixth grade, hey, because you started dressing this way, you're going to get a TikTok, you're going to get a YouTube, you're going to finally surpass your goal on Instagram, you're going to get sponsorships, and you're going to have a podcast with your friends where you talk about this sort of thing, and you're going to get this and that and all the rest, and you're going to get love, like so much love from it, I would not have believed them. I would have been like, shut up, like, get out of my house, you know? But genuinely, this was one of the best things I've ever done. And sure, you're probably thinking like, oh my god, it's not that deep. Like, it's just a freaking fashion statement. True, it is a fashion statement. But it's still one of the best things that I've got going for me because it allows me to be able to build other people's confidences up and it allows me to inspire other people. And when you dress vintage, that is the best part, is when people come up to you or people message you or people are like, you're an inspiration to me. Because of you, I'm, I wanna dress vintage. I think it's so pretty because I see it on you. And you've inspired me to be confident and you've inspired me to be able to, to go do what makes me happy. Doing this makes me happier than anything else. It's just a fashion, it's just a couple dresses, it's makeup, it's hair. But getting ready and going out and just doing what I do, not only for myself, which is why I do it in the first place, but for everyone else, the best thing I've ever done. So I really wish someone would have told me earlier, this is what you're going to get from this. <sighs> that was rough. Now that that's over. Thank you guys for watching the video. I really hope you learned something. I really hope maybe it inspired you just a little bit. I hope maybe you try vintage fashion someday. If you ever need me, comment below, DM me on my Instagram, my TikTok, whatever. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.